in this second presentation, after having introduced the proportional controller in the first one, we will try to find out whether we can find a mathematical equation or description that tells us how this control system, including this P controller, behaves. I repeat that our example was that of a level controller that was used to manipulate part of the input flow rate of a tank where we assumed the output flow rate to be proportional with the level itself such that we obtain a block scheme like this assuming that we use P control and assuming that the sensor and the actuator are ideal and can be left out. Feedback. This is the reference. This is the error. And this is the level like depicted already on the right. This is T and this of course the manipulated variable will also depend on time. Okay. We use p-control so we know the equation of the controller. What we're interested in is to know the equation of our entire feedback loop and we can look at this as the green system having two inputs, the disturbance here, damn, well, okay, it's a fat arrow, well, how do you say that, the disturbance there and the reference to the, at the left, and one output H. And we are looking for an equation that relates H to F in D and R. And we have, first of all, our control equation that we can use that states that the manipulated input flow rate equals the control gain times the reference minus the level, which is another way to express the error, plus the bias, which was a constant that we have defined in the previous presentation to be able to make sure that we can keep the level at a given desired level. Now, of course, we should eliminate f in u from our equations because f in u, t, is now just a variable somewhere in the middle of this feedback system that doesn't come in or come out of the green system. So we cannot keep it on in our equation because we will not just be able to say what this signal will look like. To do so, we need also an equation for our tank. That can easily be found in the way that you did last year in the signals and systems course by looking at the system and trying to find a differential equation that describes the behavior of the system. In this case, we can easily find such a differential equation by stating that this is just a mass or a volume balance per unit of time, that the total amount uh, of liquid running into the tank per unit of time, which is F in D plus F in U, equals the total amount of liquid going out plus, because each particle that comes in should also go out, or will increase the volume in the tank. And this increase can of course be written mathematically as the derivative of the volume with respect to T. And I know that I can replace this by C times H as defined here. And if the cross-section of the tank is constant, I can write a volume as the cross-section times the level, where the cross-section will not be time-dependent, and I get an equation like this. This is a differential equation in H. I will, for a second, write it a little bit different. I will divide by C, such that I get a 1 over here. Oh, that's another way of writing an H, but okay. And then I have my two inputs in this case, 
So I have two excitation signals, as you called this last year, F in U and F in D. And this kind of system, you know. You know from the signals and systems course that this is a system, that, or this process, this tank, is described by a first-order differential equation. And this first-order differential equation, the behavior of such a first-order, or of a system that can be described by a first-order differential equation, can typically uh, be, be, be found by defining two parameters, the time constant tau, which is, in this case, A over C, and the DC process gain, the DC gain from input to output. In this case, oh, I forgot that I was dividing by C, so I should add 1 over C over there. So in this case, I have two gains because I have two inputs. I have one gain from U to H and one gain from D to H, but of course U and D are both input flow rates, so their gains are equal. If you don't know what the time constant and what a gain, a DC gain is, then you should look up your course notes of last year. Uh, short summary, if I apply a step to one of my inputs, for instance to the disturbance input, I know that I will get an exponential behavior at my output, which looks like this. And where the pro if this step has a size of 1, I will go to a value that's equal to the DC gain. And the time constant defines how long this takes. Uh, you can do this by drawing the tangent in 0 here. And then this is tau. And we also know that tau is the time that it takes to appro approximately reach 63% of the total step that the output uh, is taking. This is, of course, the level. If you don't remember that, please look it up, because it will become important later on. I now have two equations, my control equation here, and this one should be written there, uh, the equation of my... Uh, tank, and I can now easily plug in this F in U in the equation over there. This gives me A over C, and I'm going to leave out the time dependency for a second, because otherwise it will become an equation that will not fit on my whiteboard. 1 over C times F in U, and F in U is KC R minus H plus B. I repeat the 1 over C for a second. I got mail, but that's not for now. And, of course, I should not forget my disturbance input here. Or, in general terms, the I can replace this with the time constant of my process and the 1 over C with the process gains, such that thi this equation, which I write down now, is valid for all P-controlled systems, all P-controlled systems, when the system is, uh, or can be modeled by a first order model. What I'm going to do now is throw this term, which is a term in my output variable, to the left-hand side. And I get 1 from here plus KPU times KC from here, H plus KPU KCR. That's that one over here, plus KPUB, plus KPDF in D. And what do I see now? I now have an equation that relates both inputs of my feedback system, the reference and the disturbance, 
to the output of the feedback system. So this differential equation describes what the feedback system will be doing once the controller is in use. And what do I conclude from this? First conclusion is, this is, oh, well, let's erase for a second. The first conclusion I can take is that this equation is also a first-order differential equation. That's the first conclusion. So, in other words, when I control a first-order system or process with a P-controller, the resulting feedback system will also be a first-order equation, meaning that, for instance, if I change the reference with a step, I will get some kind of exponential behavior for my level. Second conclusion is that, of course, if I start from a constant uh, reference R0 and I want to reach this R0 and I have a constant disturbance D0, then, of course, my B will be cho can be chosen such that I indeed reach uh, that value that we have already seen in the previous presentation. So the influence of the B in this equation was discussed already. However, what I also see now is that if I write this equation in standard form, meaning I have to divide by this term, that I get a thing like this in dh over dt, just h over here. Yeah, I've written some time dependencies after all, I see, so I will write them everywhere again in this equation. Equals, where is my equal sign here? This should be an equal sign, excuse me. Equals kpu. And now it gets interesting. This is what I get in R. Then I will first write my term in D. And then I have the term in B, which is not really important for what I'm going to say now. What do I see? I see two things. I see that my feedback system is a first-order system and the time constant of this system is equal to the time constant of my tank, of my process, divided by something that depends on the chosen control gain. And this something is 1 plus the, uh, the process gain times the control gain. This means, for instance, that, that if I would choose a control gain of 0, that then my system, my feedback system, would be exactly as fast as my process itself, because then this denominator becomes 1, and my tau, my time constant of the feedback system, will be equal to the time constant of my process. If I increase Kc, the denominator will become bigger, and the feedback system will become faster. So I, I can increase the speed of the response of my feedback system by choosing a bigger Kc. That's a first um, conclusion here. The closed loop time, time constant, which we will denote by TCL, equals the process time constant divided by 1 plus the process gain times the control gain. A second important conclusion is that the closed loop gain, DC gain, for the, s for the servo problem, being the gain from my reference to my output, equals something that looks like this. Now we should think a little bit about this. What would we like? Suppose at first everything is okay, I've chosen my bias such that the level is equal to the reference, and now I change, for instance, my reference. I change the reference, for instance, with a step of size 1 then, of course, my level should follow and should also increase by 1. This means that if 
the level here has in the end, after the exponential behavior has faded out, become, to become equal to a change in reference, that this gain should ideally be equal to 1. Because if this gain is 1, then any change in R will result in the same change in H. But it is not 1. It is not 1, because we see that the denominator is always bigger than the numerator. And this will cause the P controller to, have a, to show a steady state error when I change my reference. Note that this means that I have no steady state error for that reference for which I have chosen the bias, because I can solve the problem over there by choosing my bias well. But as soon as the reference changes, from the one with which I calculated the bias, I will get a steady state error because the gain from R to H is not exactly one. The same is true for the control problem. If my disturbance changes, for instance, stepwise, what I would like is to have a gain of zero because I do not want my disturbance to have an influence on what happens with my level. The best controller would be a controller where, the, when the disturbance changes, I see this a little bit in the transient behavior of what my H will, my level will do. But then I hope that my level goes back to the same reference value as before, meaning that this gain should ideally be zero. Again, it's not zero. We see, however, that when KC is increased, or even better, when it goes to infinity, then the steady state error will disappear. So if I increase Kc, this will become closer, will come closer to 1, and this will come closer to 0. So we note that an increasing Kc is good for the speed of my feedback system and is good for the steady state error. The bigger Kc the faster my feedback system becomes and the smaller my steady state error becomes. Now, of course, you already see that it's impossible that increasing Kc as much as you want will only have advantages. There will, of course, also be disadvantages in increasing Kc. And that will be a question for the pre-class quiz. What do you think will go wrong when Kc is increased too much, or in other words, why can't we make Kc infinity? Okay, that's enough for this one.